before I start, let's just pray. Man, Father, we thank you again for your word. It's alive and living. It's a, it's a, it's a light. It's a lamp. It's, it's revealing God. I pray that you help us understand this special gift that you have for each of us today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost Sunday. Um, you remember we've been teaching, like something that happens in the New Testament has some type of, uh, of uh, connection to the Old Testament, right? And we know that uh, as the Jewish people celebrate Pentecost Sunday, not maybe the same way we do, but they look at it as they celebrate the, uh, the giving of the Ten Commandments. And so I thought about that over and over and over. I thought, wow, the giving of the Ten Commandments. And then now we have Pentecost Sunday. Most of us know Pentecost Sunday as the beginning of the, the church age, right? I mean, we, we taught that for many years. And it's beginning to, the church is, I think, okay, Lord, what does it mean that the, the, the Jewish people celebrate this, um, the, the giving of the Ten Commandments, and then here we're celebrating the beginning of the church age? Is, is there some connection there? And everybody already knows that, right, what it is. I mean, here we have the law given. And now we have what? We have grace, right? I mean, there's a difference. We're not under the law, but we're under grace, right? We should be, but we should fulfill the law, right? It didn't go away. Come on, don't look at me like that. We still should, I mean, come on, honor God first, right? Love your family, right? Your wife, I mean, don't covet, right? I mean, don't steal, don't kill. There's all those commandments, right, still are relevant. But now we don't, we're not under the law, right? So what, if we're under, under grace, what is it, what's our attitude? I don't have to have a check mark of all the things I do right or wrong. I think we would live in grace if we walk in love and peace and, and happiness and all those things that the Holy Spirit gives us. Amen. How many of you have walk in love every day? Good. Two of you. So yeah, three or four of you. Okay, yeah. The rest of us were working on it, right? So and, and you know, how about peace? How many walk in peace every day? With, yeah, peace of the Holy Ghost. Go to Galatians 5, 22. It tells you all the gifts of the Spirit, right? And we, we look at ourselves and say, well, do we really, Tina amplified it last week, do we really walk in those things? Do we live like that? Or do we use it as a check mark that we're not like that? Right? The rate below there, verse, I believe, is 17, tells us that you're not, you're walking after the flesh, but you're not walking after the Spirit. Today, I want us to learn how to walk, if you will, in the Spirit, and understand what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is from Scripture, amen? And understand that Father God, in His ultimate wisdom, said, I'm going to empower my people, the ones that call me God with this gift so they could be my witnesses, share the story about my son and what he did for the world, amen? And sometimes persecution comes, and we know that, right? Maybe not so much in America, but across the world we see people dying every day for the gospel's sake, giving their lives up. They can't do that out of their own will. I was thinking about the gentleman in, in, in Iran, the, the, the pastor that's there been uh, beat and beat, and, and you know, all they want him to do is deny that Jesus is a real, right? Deny Christ and he will set you free. That's what I read in the paper. Anyway. I don't know how much of that came out exactly. I think it was a, a newsletter. But anyway, you know, if you would just deny Christ, they would just let him go. And would you, would you, in that situation, no matter how horrible the, the torture, would say, no, I will not deny Christ. And hoping and praying for those captors that are, are doing that to him, that they would come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior through his testimony. Maybe in his mind, he can't even think that anymore because it, the torture is so great, he can't even think about that. He can't even fathom, I mean, I, don't, I can't even fathom what it would be like to, 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 to go through that, thrown in a, a dark cell, no light for days, be and be and then nurse back to health to be able to be tortured again. This is what's happening today. This is not happening, you know, this isn't years ago, this is happening now. It's all, I believe he can only do that. As I was praying about this service today, I, I think he can only do that because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There's only, the only way that we can stand up in today's society and not doubt it, not question it, not... Uh, you know, well, is the Bible real or not? You know, I mean, apathy is just all over this country, all over the city. Just people just don't even care about God anymore. Don't even understand. They don't even want to know. And here we are trying to be a light in the world. We can't do that without the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was so glad when I was uh, kicked out of a church way, way long time ago. I was because I, I knew that the Word of God was real. 
And if I believe Genesis, I had to re believe Revelation. I could just like pick and choose what I wanted to believe in. Amen? I, it all was relevant. And as our pastor had told the congregation not to associate with us any longer, because the only thing we did is believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit was for today. Amen? And that the power of God is for today. To be a witness in your workplace, in the marketplace, in your life, to your family, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? We need this. You need this. That's why we celebrate this special day. Amen? I want to be, I want to have the power. I look, I don't always like to look backwards, but we look at history. We look at the day of Pentecost. We look at when the, the, when the apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit. And those that were in the upper room, 120 people. It says the Spirit of God came down on them as tongues of fire. I know that. Is. I don't know what it. Visually, I've seen a lot of videos and a lot of things. I don't know what that looked, but tongues, something came down on them like fire. Maybe they acted like they were on fire. Amen. And it says they begin to speak in tongues. They begin to speak in different languages that they didn't know. And that day, Peter stood up, and the power of the Holy Spirit began to teach about this Jesus that they just crucified a few days, a few weeks earlier. He said, this is the Christ. Your salvation is only in Him. Amen? And all of a sudden, was it 3,000 Jewish people in the temple area believed? Hallelujah. Father, I want 3,000 people in Madison. Not, not church people. I want 3,000 new converts. Amen? I want, you know, I just want one. I'll take one. Hallelujah. But thousands of people got saved that day because they finally believed. So let's look at um, what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you would, turn in your Bibles to Luke uh, chapter 24 and um, verse 49. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is fulfilled in Jesus' words concerning the promise of the Father. It is a baptism with power. Jesus said, the one who baptized with the Holy Spirit and through this experience, the kingdom of God will be manifested in our lives. So if you look at Luke 24, and let's go back up to verse 45. I shared this with the, the, the ministry team yesterday. And then he opened their minds so that he could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what was written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name. And all the nations, can you say amen? amen. All the nations, beginning at Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. Yeah. I am going to send you what the Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power on high. So here Jesus is telling them. Now I like verse 45 because it's not in red in my Bible, okay? I don't know about you, but verse 45 I think is really significant here. The disciples were with Jesus. They were with him for over three years, and they talked with him. They seen miracles. They seen the blind eyes open. They seen crippled people. They seen uh, leopards healed. Amazing things that they were with Jesus. They walked on water. Come on. Yes. Peter walked on the water. I mean, you know, the other disciples stayed in the boat, but he walked. I mean, come on, that's amazing. And then, he, you know, people forget Peter makes mistakes. We know that. But he walked back to the boat, too, with Jesus. Not that he got out of the boat, but then he walked back. I mean, it's a miracle. So he, they were with Jesus. He was, they were with Jesus. They said all these wonderful signs and wonders. But when the persecution came, what happened? They scattered. Amen. But look what he says in verse 45. I love this part. It says, and he opened their minds so they could understand the scripture. How many here today want to have your minds open to understand the scripture? Amen. I want to understand. I want the Holy Spirit to help me to understand the scriptures. So as I minister to, it to you or to people I know, I want them to hear the truth of the word of God. Not what Pastor Bob has to say. No, I want them to know Jesus and him crucified. I want to know, I want them to know that Father God loves them unconditionally. No matter where they're at in their lives. 
Not like we when we judge people. No, he's a loving father. Amen? Some of us don't get that. But their minds were open to understand the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now, uh, next thing, after receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have the power to be witnesses, to resist sin. And that was the first thing. I think not only that when we believe and receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, how many, well, I won't raise your hand, but you receive, most of us here are Christians, so one day you said yes to Jesus. One moment, revelation came to your heart and your mind. You said yes to him. It was the Holy Spirit that revealed that you needed Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. How, I, mean, I remember that day. It's like, like it happened yesterday. It never, I, I go back there all the time thanking God for changing my life. I was 19 years old, but God changed my life when I recognized I needed something more than myself. And the life that I was living was no good. And I said yes to Jesus revelation. Jesus, it was the Holy Spirit that drew me. It was the Holy Spirit that said, yes, you need this. It was the Holy Spirit that revealed to me that I had sin in my life. It was the Holy Spirit that said, that made me feel guilty. Is that okay? I felt bad about my life. I felt bad about the way I lived. Amen? And then all of a sudden, you know, the Holy Spirit said, you need more. And I said, yes, I need more. I didn't even know what that was. And I said, yes, because Tina wrote in her Bible, I accepted Christ. Nobody preached Jesus to me. I didn't know nothing about this. It just that, that those words said, I needed Christ. I, and the Holy Spirit said, yes, you need Christ. And then I began to learn about who this Christ was and why I had peace in my life. Amen. It was a marvelous time. Can you remember that day? Amen. That's the peace that you have to, you have that one in your heart desire for people out that don't know Jesus. Those that are confused by the things in this world, we have we want to give them that peace. Amen. Amen. It is a it is a, a separate act of God that He gives us the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's look at um, uh, there's a, there's two different baptisms. Does everybody say when you read scripture, you see there's different baptisms? Do you understand that? I'm going to show you that a little bit. We have baptism in the Christ. Let's look at a couple of scripture verses. Let's look at Galatians 3.27. It says, You are all sons of God through faith, verse 26, in Christ Jesus. For all of you were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. You have been belonged to Christ. Then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. So much right there, but I just want to show you that it says that we are baptized what into Christ. Amen. Another verse that shares that is uh, 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 1 Corinthians 12, 13, you can look that up later. But it shows us that this is the uh, initial uh, baptism referring to being born again. How I many understand being born again? John refers to that, right? So when you're born again, you're baptized or you're submerged in the Christ. Your life, now, not your own, but now you're in Christ. Amen? Um, the Holy Spirit baptizes us into Christ, uh, into Christ, into the Christ, into Christ Jesus, but Jesus baptizes us into his Spirit. So let me say that again. The Holy Spirit baptizes us into Christ. The Holy Spirit draws us to Jesus. Amen. And then uh, Jesus uh, baptizes us into the Holy Spirit. When this occurs, we are totally filled and surrounded by God. Amen. So God is in us. God is around us. We're aware of God's presence. Amen. We're aware of the Holy Spirit moving in our life. That's the difference of people that, that don't believe in the back. There's some Christians, believe it or not, that don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Can you believe that? I don't understand that. This is a gift from the Father. He gave us, the, he gave us, he drew us to Jesus, and now he's going to give us another gift. We'll see that in just a minute. And he gave us this gift so we can have the fullness of the awareness of God. Can you say it that way? Have the fullness of the awareness of God. He's in you. He's about you. He's around you. You walk with Him. You talk with Him. You sleep with Him. He's there with you all the time. The Holy Spirit is there for you. Can you say amen? amen. Why? Because yeah. God wants us not to be weak Christians. He doesn't want us to waver in our faith. He wants us to be strong in our faith. Amen. Because there's trials and tribulations that are we're going to uh, come across. How many know that we do? We fight not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces. And you need the Spirit of God to help you with that. Can you say amen? amen? Come on. Hallelujah. Now, what is speaking in tongues? 
Look, in Acts 2, 1, and 4, let's go to Acts. You know we're going to get there eventually anyway, right? Acts 2. And in 1 through 4, it says, in the, in the my former books, Luke is talking here, uh, Theophilus, I write about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen after his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised. Amen? Which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the word baptism means what? Submersed, right? You're submerged with we, we, water baptism. We don't sprinkle it here. We submerge you in water. When you are, uh, become a Christian and you recognize that you want to follow Christ, we give you an opportunity to be baptized in water. You're submerged in the water. You're saying publicly that you are now a Christian. Your old life is left in the water. You're raised a new person in Christ Jesus. And you're, you're confessing to us and to the congregation and to the world that you are now serving Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. And it's a great moment in a Christian's life when they stand in faith. And Jesus said, you wait, and I'm gonna, you're going to be submersed in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How many want to be submersed in the Holy Spirit today? How many want the fullness of the Holy Spirit? We don't want part of God. God has so much more for you and me today. Amen? He wants you to have His fullness. Not just part of God. Not just some of God. Not just some of it just for our convenience sake. How many have been there before, huh? Well, God, how about just a little bit of God? I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a little Christian or whatever. I'm not strong enough. No, all of us can walk in the fullness and the power of God. Amen? Hallelujah. There is a language uh, from God to, to God. For, let's turn to 1 Corinthians, uh, two verses, 1 Corinthians 14, 2 and 4, and Jude 20. 1 Corinthians 14. Fourteen two and four. Go to the very two two there. Fourteen. Um, well let's let's read the first one through four. It says, Follow the ways of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts. How many people here want to eagerly desire spiritual gifts? See, I find people that are just playing church, they don't want anything from God. They just want to like, I already accepted Jesus forty years ago. You know, I'm good to go. But there's so much more. That's right. Amen. You know? It's so much more. Follow the ways of love and eagerly desire spiritual bliss, especially the gift of prophecy. For especially, uh, I'm sorry. For anyone who speaks in tongues does not speak to man, but to who? God. Right. Indeed, no one understands him, but utters mysteries with this with his spirit. But every one who prophesies speaks to man for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. So, what is prophecy? I have a shy, side lesson this morning. This is a free lesson. What is prophecy for? Look right here. Strengthening, encouraging, and comforting. Hallelujah. So you got somebody prophesying over you and it's totally wacko, just tell them to be quiet. You know, if it's not encouraging you, it's not strengthening you, and it's not comforting, then maybe it's not prophecy. Just saying, that's the word of God. Okay? He who speaks, let's verse 4. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Is there anything wrong with edifying yourself? How many, okay, just be, let's be honest, let's take a survey this morning. How many here would say sometimes you are discouraged? Right? We get discouraged. And, and those are ministry, people that are work, walking in Christ, I mean, we get discouraged sometimes. And the Bible says if you want to get strengthened, what do you have to do? Let's go to Jude 20. I love this little book, Jude. It's right before the book of Revelation. Verse 20, and all my Bibles was highlighted. Maybe because I'm a good Assembly God guy or something. I don't know. Anyway. 
It says, but you, dear friends, build yourself up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Amen? So we pray in tongues, we pray in the Holy Spirit, it edifies who? You. So sometimes, maybe just get in your prayer closet, or like I do sometimes, driving down the road, or, you know, I'm just discouraged. I don't close my eyes when I'm driving down the road. And I pray in tongues. Amen? I pray in the Spirit because, you know, I can deal with all, sometimes I can't deal with all the stuff that goes on in my life, right? Come on. Sometimes it's just hard. And I just think, I just think, oh God, I, I don't know what else, I don't even know what to pray. We find out that the prayer, Holy Spirit will pray for us. So let me just pray in tongues and let the Holy Spirit pray for me. Amen? Sometimes us that have been filled with the Holy Spirit, we get up in the middle of the night, we start praying in tongues. We don't know why we're praying. Maybe somebody needs to, needs to be, across the world, needs to be prayed for. And you get to pray. I, it's a different prayer for me sometimes when that happens to me. 3.10 in the morning, I get up. If I get up, if I get up in the middle of the night and it's 3.10, I pray in tongues. I've done that for years. I don't know why. 3.10, God wakes me up. I don't know where that is across the world, but I just begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I fall asleep praying on my knees by my bed in tongues. Wake up in the morning, it's, my knees are sore, but I'm just laying on my bed sleeping. Amen? Because I'm tired. But I try to get up, you know, I mean, the Holy Spirit. 310, I know it's got to get up time, you know? And so God does that to us. That's a different type of prayer. But sometimes I just discourage, I'll come in the sanctuary, I'll put on some music, and I'll just pray in tongues. Why? Because I just feel weak at times. Amen? Is that just me? I'm just being honest with you. Making it real, right? Sometimes it's tough to do this thing. But when I pray in the Spirit of God, the other, this was a Thursday, it was a Thursday, I came in here, I prayed in tongues, I was laying on, laying on the uh, chairs right there, I started praying in tongues, I don't know how long time went by, right? I just was praying, I got up, I walked out the sanctuary, I looked up, it was 10 minutes. Ten minutes, and I was totally, I was, I was totally free. Amen. And I'm not saying there's a time limit. I'm just saying this: God wants to encourage you by praying in the Spirit. Amen. He's given us you, given the gift. Okay. How does a person speak in tongues? Does anybody know? This is a good lesson. I say, well, how do you speak in tongues? How do you speak in English or in your native tongue? Do you think about it when you speak? Your brain forms words, your mouth forms words, your, your lungs are, uh, you know, help you speak. You don't, you don't even think about it, right? You just, you've got words and you speak them. You don't think about it. Same thing when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives you those words then. Amen? And you speak what the Holy Spirit tells you. Well, that sounds pretty weird, Pastor, but I don't care. Just pray. Yeah, Lewis will have one prayer language. Tina will have a different prayer language. Everybody here will have a different language. It's fine. Sometimes it sounds the same as somebody else, but, it's, you know, it's okay. It's God, the Holy Spirit, just speaking. I remember we were teaching a class. We do an a encounter retreat. We do, try to do it twice a year. And the last lesson is this lesson here. It's on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And some people have never heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we teach them very slowly what it means. We look up every verse, you know, and show them in Scripture the, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then at the end, we, we pray for them to receive the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray for you, too. If you haven't been praying in the Holy Spirit in a while, you need to be refilled. We're going to pray for that today also. Amen. If you have never spoken tongues and you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, so you have the power of God in your life, amen, we're going to pray for that for you also today. And I just tell people, I said, just, we, people are, are praising God, so we say, well, let's praise God first. Let's sing a song, let's praise God. So we praise God, hallelujah, glory to God, we love you, Jesus, thank you, Father, for the gift. You're so wonderful, you're so wonderful. And then, um, and then, you know, then somebody will start speaking in tongues, somebody else will speak in tongues, and there's still people that don't at that moment. Right, Tina, we have to When they, some of the people don't, as, as I, and I say, well, Holy Spirit, I, I, help, I, want, I want everybody to have the fullness of God, and, and it's a gift from you, Father, so give them the gift of the Holy We pray for that. Father, give me the gift that you promised, and the Holy Spirit the gift of speaking in tongues. Amen? And so they pray that prayer, and then we wait. And uh, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not from, I was taught, uh, wrong for many years, you know, we, we were speaking tongues out loud, real loud, and on tip, and people, you know, and until so they spoke in tongues too, and we thought, well, that was, that didn't quite, quite go over very well sometimes, you know, maybe two or three hours, and we're still waiting for somebody to speak. Now, now I just say, Holy Spirit, just tell me what to say to them, and then, that's, then it happens, amen. And uh, I remember one guy was praying, and, and, and we 
worshiping, and, and the Lord told me to tell him to stop speaking in English. That was his native language. And so, uh, so he stopped speaking in English. And then I said, now speak in tongues. And he did immediately, just like that. I was like, wow, this is really easy, God. He didn't have to, he didn't have to, you know, I was like, wow, this is, this is God, not me, amen? This is what God does. He wants you to have the fullness. It's just like, I tell people, it's just like this. When you ask the Lord to forgive you of something in your life that you knew you were doing wrong, and you, you sincerely in your heart said, God, please forgive me, it wasn't just instantaneously, it was gone. Right? The guilt was gone. The, 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 the sin was gone. It was gone. And after me, it's just like that. The Holy Spirit just was calling you just like that. Amen? How many have that experience? You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So just your, you begin to speak. Um, let's go to John uh, 7, 3, uh, 7. John 7. We have a few, quite a few scripture verses to go through, but is, is that okay? Praise the Lord. And uh, John 7, we'll start with verse 37 and go through 30, uh, 39. It says, on the, last, the, uh, on the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams or rivers of living water will flow within them. By this he meant, what did he say? He explains the scripture, amen? By this he meant the spirit whom those who believe in him were later to receive. So what was he talking about here? He's talking they were going to later receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. So he's saying this rivers of living water will flow from us. So what does that look like? I mean, if I was a cartoon person and drew a cartoon, I see a bunch of people with rivers flowing out of them, you know, water just gushing out of them, right? What does that what does that look like today, Christians? Come on, rivers of living living water, or the rivers of the Holy Spirit should flow out of us, yeah. right? Because they're referring to the Holy Spirit. Rivers of the Holy Spirit will flow out. What would that look like? Rivers of the Holy Spirit flowing out of you and me. I think of let's go to Galatians five. Turn there with me. Rivers of living water. Live rivers of the Spirit of God. So 522, right? So rivers of living water. This is the fruit of the Spirit. Alright, so rivers of living God. The Spirit, uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Rivers <coughs> of love flowing out of you. Amen? Rivers of what? Peace. How about rivers of joy? Come on. What would rivers of joy look like flowing out of you and me today? Huh? No matter what happens, you can get your truck stolen, you still be happy. Yeah. Right, Tim? Yes. Hallelujah. You know, you know, you can lose all your livelihood in one night, but I know this Jesus who I believe in and the power of the Spirit in my life and joy and peace and happiness will flow from us. Amen? Amen. Gentleness. Hallelujah. How many could be more? Self-control. Hallelujah. Things that just flow from us because of the Spirit of God in us. Father, I pray today that rivers of living water will flow through this congregation. Father, I pray that we receive the love that you give us and it flow from us just like it flowed from the cross of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Rivers of living water flow from your life. It's amazing. And that's what God wants from us. So let me just go through a few scripture verses with you. As a matter of fact, let's, um, Tina, why don't you come up here? We're going to do, you're going you're gonna to read the verses as I say them. Is that okay? Yeah. So we can go through this a little quicker. I want to have some more prayer time at the end. I believe God wants to do a, a, a miracle today in your life. How many need healing in your body today? I'm tired of having pain in my body, amen? I believe God can heal us today. Rivers of healing flow from you because you're full of the Spirit of God. Come on, has anybody heard this before? Or is this new doctrine? Am I teaching something wrong? Do you listen, do you understand the power of God in us? 
through his yeah. spirit. Amen. He wants you, go ahead, start with these. He wants you to have this power in your life. Amen. Yes, okay, amen. Okay, I, if I, I'm going to have a Holy Ghost party. You know, I remember, never mind, I got stories only. But anyway, we see some good and some bad things. Yes, both of these. So we're going to, if you have your Bible or your iPad or whatever you got, we're going to start with uh, 1 Corinthians 3.16 and Romans 8.7. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 says, Now don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple? And that God's spirit lives in you? So this is what it says. So as a Christian, listen, as a Christian, the spirit of God is already in you. Amen? He deposited that in you. When you said yes to God, when you said yes to Jesus, he you could not come to Jesus unless it was the spirit of God drawing you. Romans 8, 9. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the spirit, if... The Spirit of God lives in you. Amen. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. Okay, so the Spirit of God is in you. If you believe the Spirit of God is in you. And if you believe, how many believers do I have here today? Raise your hands, come on. Raise your hands. All right, if you believe the Spirit of God is in you, and then you don't fulfill the desires of your sinful nature. Can you say amen? Amen. I, and I say, oh, oh me or oh, amen. One or two, because we, if you're serving the Spirit of God, you're not serving your fleshly nature. Right? Okay, I was going to say something else. Go ahead. Okay. okay, the gift of the Holy Spirit is a promise for all who ask. Now, I want you to turn this, look at this in your Bibles, because it's really important. This is a verse that I, I, I love to show people when I say, is the gift of the Holy Spirit for today? I go, I would ever return to Luke chapter 11, 11 through 13. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Okay, so what's the requirement here? To ask. To ask. Is, it, is, is God going to hold back the Holy Spirit from you? No. No. All you have to ask. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Can people be baptized in the Holy Spirit and not ask for it? Come on, scholars, what do you think? Yes. Can people be baptized in the Holy Spirit and not ask for it? See, what happens sometimes, we want to take one or two scripture verses, we're going to put, a little, put it in a box, that this is how God has to operate. I think God operates any way He wants to. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. So can a person get saved, baptized in water, and filled with the Holy Ghost all at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. They didn't ask for it. They just were being obedient, amen, to the Holy Spirit. And they got began to speak. I've seen that happen, amen. So I know God, but I'm saying if you want, if you're seeking God, it's a good thing. It says here in Luke, God, your word says in Luke, I'm, that if I ask you, give me this gift. So Father, I'm asking today. There's nothing wrong with that either. But I tell you, God does so many great things and blows our theology out the window sometimes. Amen? He will do what's best for his kingdom if we are willing to receive that from him. Amen? All right, so uh, Luke 11, okay. And believers may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We know that from Joel 2.28, right? How many, we know that, right? Acts 1.8 says the Holy Spirit gives us power to be witnesses. Um, go to Romans 2, I mean 26. The Holy Spirit helps us pray. This is another uh, thing that the Spirit of God alluded to earlier, but I'll show you in scriptures, 826. The Holy Spirit helps you and I pray. Sometimes when I don't know what to pray, I just shut my mouth. And I pray in the Spirit of God. Amen. I stop speaking in English or my native tongue and I begin to pray. The Let the Spirit of God pray. Romans 826. It says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans and words that cannot express. 
All right. Now, there, we're, we're going to go on a little bit further now. And I want you to go on the book of Acts and show you that there's no real order to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, just that you are a believer first, okay? So we see that some people were a believer, then were baptized in the Holy Spirit, then baptized in water. Then we see some people that were baptized, were, were believers, were baptized in water, and then received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's amazing. God, there's no order. And there's no, God, all He wants is a willing heart. Amen. And an open vessel. Yes. And He'll use you in mighty, mighty ways. Amen? A willing spirit. Yes, Lord, use me. Yes, Lord. Not my will be done, but your will be done. Is that the hardest thing for Americans to say? Is that for anybody to say? Lord, not, I want the fullness of what you have for me, but I want you to work through me. Hallelujah. Don't get too quiet on me now. That's a hard thing, saying, Lord, I, I give my life for, for whatever you want. So that others may come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's why he gave the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, just so you could be glorified. And I can be a witness to my friends and my family and to my co-workers. Use me, Lord, by your Spirit. Amen. See, I don't want to do big events and things to try to draw the unbeliever to Christ. I want to talk to them. And I want them to have a real experience with Father's God. Yes. And know the fullness of the forgiveness of the Lord. And I want to hear them pray. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I, I pray different prayer. I don't pray with people anymore. I learned that. I let them pray when they come to that moment, when they recognize they need Jesus. And I pray, and, I, and I'm out in my closet, I thank God that he used me one more time to see somebody come to the saving knowledge of Christ. And you never know. That person's family will come to know Jesus. People that they know, who knows, if they come from another country like they, we have in here in our church, they go back when uh, Leo goes back to his country and see all his co-workers come to Jesus who have a revival in China. Hallelujah. Who knows? But God does. My prayer for you today is that you understand that this gift is for everyone. So let's go just a couple of scripture verses and Acts, a couple of examples of Acts, as most of you may know already, but let's go over them again. Acts 8, 14 through 16, Tina. So that a person may be water baptized and saved, but not yet be baptized in the Holy Spirit. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. When they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, they had simply been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Then we'll go on. Okay. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Amen. They laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now let's look at uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 44 through 46. The speaking in tongues and praising God is our sign or evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It shows you the evidence, what happens when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. And go to 46 and 48. And then uh, yeah, the verse four, okay, and praising God. Then Peter said, "Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have." So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. 
So what was, the, what was common in these incidents? They were baptized in the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in tongues, amen? So some were baptized first and then they, were, they received and some were received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and then they were baptized. There's no order here. And I think God had the writer write this because it just shows us that you can't put God, it has to work a certain way. We have to give the Holy Spirit. He's more, think about, it. we're trying to put God, the creator of the world, in this little box. And say you have to work this way. He he can work any way he wants, and he can use anyone he wants. Amen. That's right. Amen. And I'm just saying, God, please yeah. use me. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Yes. Use us, Lord, today. Hallelujah. So here are some steps to receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm just going to go through some steps that we feel that need to happen in your heart, mind. Uh, again, God can baptize you right where you're at right now. Hallelujah, I pray that that happens. So let's look at this. It, first of all, I believe that we have to remove all barriers to God. All sin, unforgiveness, doctrinal hang-ups, amen? Pride, or any unclean thing that we might have in our lives, amen? That's why I prayed earlier today. Let's get rid of those things now before we go into this part of service. You know, and as we're praying in a few minutes, if there's anything in your life that needs to get rid of, then again, this is this is uh, uh, things that the Holy Spirit will remind you, you know, uh, uh, that that you may need to remove some things in your life. Pray and confess your sins, renouncing anything that would hinder uh, you from receiving the Holy Spirit, and then request it or ask for it. That's what we, I like to doing that, and people just verbally say, uh, Jesus, we ask. For the promise that God gave us of the Holy Spirit. We just ask the Lord for it. Very simply, yes. just like a child would ask a daddy for something. Amen. Tell the Lord that you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Or say, God, we want the baptism. We want the evidence of speaking in tongues. And then receive it. Reach out by faith to take hold of this gift that God freely gives to all of those who believe. Don't analyze it in your mind. That's what happened to me and Tina, right? So we received a, a gentleman shared with us about this cool thing called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We were new Christians, so we didn't have, we never heard about the Holy Spirit. We never heard about because the church we were going to didn't talk about the Holy Spirit, so maybe that's why we didn't hear it, amen. But anyway, as he began to share the scriptures with us, we said, Wow, we never read that before. That didn't even know there was a book of Acts. So yeah, it was pretty cool. And as we, he shared with us, he, he prayed with us. And I tell you what, we were in a car. We were in our car. And it was like God showed up in our car at the beach in North Carolina next to the fishing pier, right? We were in the car. And it was like amazing. I never felt the power and the presence of God like that in my whole life up to that time. And we just sat there for, I don't know, it seemed like hours, but I know it was a couple of hours. We just sat there in the presence of God. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I wasn't taught anything. It was like, wow. It was cool. And we finally got our wits about ourselves and we drove him home. We went home. It was like, that was really cool. We read our Bible every day. We just wanted more of God. We were so hungry. We didn't even know what that all meant. Amen. Then we went to this church called First Assembly of God in Jacksonville, North Carolina, and they actually spoke in tongues there. And they worship like people really enjoyed worship, right? They were like happy to be in church. They were talking in the parking lot. They were talking in church service. The pastor had them tell them to be quiet so they could actually go on with the service. It was a fun place to be, amen? And it was like really cool. And then we learned that the baptism of the Holy Spirit was for all of us. And we prayed and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And our lives have never been the same since, amen? And then we got picked out of church. And then we thought, wow. You know how when you, something happens traumatic like that, you go, you get all upset inside. So Tina and I were like driving down the road, Highway 172. We're driving, listening to uh, the Christian radio station, which was uh, Southern Gospel. Nothing like it. It's awesome. My kids won't let me play it at home, but it is still, still <laughs> uh, has a place in my heart. And I turned to Tina and I said, we must be doing something right because we got kicked out of the church. Amen? 
I mean, I'm not going to tell you other than that. We are happy. Hallelujah. Because we found something in the Word of God that was truth. Amen. And so we want that same power in your life today. We want you to experience it. Just break the barrier. It's for every one of us. Amen. If you haven't spoken tongues in a long time, well, well today we want to get, get, get you restarted. Amen. If you haven't experienced that in a while, let's get up. We'll come to the altar in a few minutes and let's we'll pray together. God, fill you again over and over with this power of His Spirit. Amen. And uh, also, there's a, here, no, let me read two more things for you. It's reach out and by faith and take hold of the gift that God really gives to all who believe. Don't analyze it with your mind, but allow your spirit to receive the gift. Worship the Lord and keep uh, uh, your mind on Him. Now, uh, Chris, come on up, Chris. Let's jam a little bit here. It says, by faith, stop praying in your own native language. So we'll pray and worship for a little bit. Maybe sing, we'll sing a song here, come Holy Spirit. And just we'll just worship with that. And then there's going to come a time where we're just going to ask not to speak in your own language. Let the Holy Spirit pray through you. Amen? Unless you've got this fill you again with the Spirit, if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. As you yield your spirit... You will begin to feel a wonderful release of worship. That's what happened to us. We worship God. We praised Him. Amen. We get to worship Him. And then when something else happened, the peace that I experienced when I first became a Christian, it like was ten times more. Amen. Amen. It was like ten times more. I mean, I received that peace when I became a believer, but when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, this peace came over me that was just simply amazing. And peace and joy, of course, are two fruits of the Spirit, will flood you anew with a new sense of His presence. Amen? And as we say in that song, we want your presence, God, right? Come, Holy Spirit. We desire, desire the presence of God. Amen? Let's stand together and let's sing that song, uh, uh, Holy Spirit. And then um, we're going to ask uh, Pamela and Michael. Uh, come help us pray, Tina. We're going to uh, come over here on the side, and we're going to pray for you. We want you to pray. Richard, come down and pray with us, too. And if you haven't received, uh, or if you haven't spoken in tongues in a while, you know, just come and, and just let us lay hands on you, as the Word of God says, as we worship together, and uh, pray for you to, you to be refilled, filled for the first time. God is really you to have the power, walk in the power of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.